This is The Sand Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole. But the real star today's show are these beautiful new add-on wheels coming from Thrustmaster. And each of these wheels, we've got the Thrustmaster Competition Wheel Add-on Sparco 310 mod. You've got the Open Wheel Add-on mod as well. And what's really cool is both of these wheels were completely dedicated to the bases they came with. So you'd find this wheel on the TSXW, you would find this wheel on the TSPC, and the only way to get these wheels was by buying those bases. And at this point in time, I mean, you know, they had a variety of different wheels to choose from from Thrustmaster that you could add on to any of the, the T model bases, the T300, the TX, the T500, all the TS bases, and including the TGT. But those three, and that includes the TGT, all had their, let's call them proprietary wheels, or the only way you could get this wheel was to buy the TGT. The only way to get this was the TSXW, and the only way to get this was through the TSPC, and a lot of people felt like, hey, I wanted that cool rim on my wheel, and one of the beautiful things about Thrustmaster, again, getting back to the whole concept, is they do have some very affordable wheel options for any of those bases. So, with that said, you now have these available. So when we're looking at the open wheel, we're looking at $149.99 for the wheel rim on its own, making it really one of the cheapest or least expensive wheel rims you can get for any of the Thrustmaster wheels, which is cool. We'll talk about that in a minute. And then when you've got the Thrustmaster Competition Wheel Sparco 310 mod, I will all admit one of my favorite rims, maybe my favorite rim from Thrustmaster uh, for $200. So these, again, are available for anybody to add to any of those Thrustmaster ecosystem bases. The, again, the T300, the TX, the T500, the TS bases, and the TGT. That's kind of cool news. I mean, now, this isn't really going to be a review because, honestly, I reviewed this wheel as a TSXW. I reviewed this wheel as a TSPC. I have a link to both of those reviews, and that includes comments on the wheel bases themselves, which are virtually interchangeable. And it also includes my thoughts on the wheel rims and some of the pros and cons directly to them. And all that really applies. So I felt it'd be a little redundant to review these, being that I have uh, already reviewed them in the case of with their entire wheel. They're just now available on their own. Again, 149 for this variation, 199 for this variation. So why don't we take a look? I mean, when I pulled the OW, I call it the open wheeled out of the box. I mean... It's, you know, it's packaged nicely, coming all on its own. You can see the entire family on the back of the box. And it's, it's again, it's it's a nice-looking wheel. So when you pull it out, it's well-protected in its box. And you see very colorful design, uh, very bright colors, maybe not the typical kind of labeling that you would expect on a steering wheel. It comes with suede grips on both sides, uh, well, both sides, of course. And again, being a formula-style rim, it's really built to hold it on both sides simultaneously. You're not moving your hands around. You're holding them at that 9 and 3 position all the time. You've got metal paddle shifters on the back, and it's, it's a really solid wheel. In the end, you end up with an 11-inch wheel. It's 280 centimeters um, across. So it's uh, 280 or uh, 280 millimeters. I'm sorry, 28 centimeters, 11 inch with suede grips, uh, metal paddle shifters that end up having about a one and a quarter inch, a little over, maybe like three eighths of an inch of travel. The metal area in the center is anodized black metal, and you've got six buttons, which are really cool with their rounded tops. It's a it's a unique rounded top type button. Um, is this video not playing there we go it's a it's a unique rounded top button you've got that little three-way switch that also presses in so it's a kind of like a left and a right with a returning spring and then pressing in and again those little dome buttons have a fair amount of travel and a good click a positive click as you know i like to call them and uh you know a little directional pad so you've got some extra buttons to go around and that little jeweled three uh, Thrustmaster logo in the center. And again, small paddle shifters. They fit the formula shape and the typical Thrustmaster connector right there in the center. So it is a good looking wheel. Um, and again, there was a shot of it with uh, this wheel on the TSXW. So that's sort of funny. That's what we wouldn't expect to see. That's the combination that I would have been doing, for example. So it is a, a great looking wheel. 
And at 149, it gives you some decent options. Um, for me, you know, so TGT comes with this. And this is a great wheel rim. And it has a lot of buttons and these dials and everything. But there's something very streetcar, perhaps. Something very even not authentic to racing about it. A fine wheel. I love this wheel. I'm not knocking it. But some people, when they race, I mean, honestly, they want a certain level of realism. Uh, or maybe in the case of the open wheel, they're trying to recreate open wheel driving. I also think about this but this particular wheel rim. And with that layout of buttons, um, got it spinning here. But this layout of buttons, uh, let's bring in our close-up shot. You know, with this layout of buttons, it's pretty simple. Um, there's not a lot to remember. And I kind of think for some people, maybe in VR, that could be a really good advantage because... You know, it's going to be very simple to always be like this. In VR, I don't know how much you want to be walking around. And you want your buttons to be somewhere easy to remember. You know, keep, think of mind, keep in mind, you're kind of flying blind when you're in VR. And it's going to make it easy to remember. Just six buttons, a two-way switch, a little third click there, and uh, easy to remember hand positions. And I think that goes a long way. Now, again, getting back to realism, and again... Maybe you're sitting on a T300. Maybe you're sitting on a TGT and you have this wheel, which is actually kind of heavy uh, compared to that. Very heavy compared to that. Um, but maybe you're looking for that real super realistic kind of feel. And that's one of the reasons why the 310 was my favorite rim for the Thrustmaster bases. Uh, you've got a few more buttons. You actually have nine buttons total. Three on the bottom here, three on the bottom there. Uh, let's get some shots of this sucker coming out of the box. But... Um, it is 12.2 inches or 310 millimeters, 31 centimeters, left to right, also covered in suede. It is an official Sparco replica of the 310 steering wheel. Metal palatal shifters that are adjustable about three-eighths of an inch inside and out. And they also have travel a little over a quarter, almost three-eighths of an inch of travel. Great looking wheel. It is a little flat on the top and bottom, which is like sort of like a... A, a, a more modern GT style car type of a shape of a wheel that you would expect to see. Again, you have a black metal anodized center spoke with sort of a carbon fiber S trim on it. And nine typical gaming buttons that don't have the same kind of travel. They're not nearly as fancy as the jeweled buttons that are on that open wheeled uh, version, in my opinion. Uh, you've got a tactical switch with a... Um, you got a tactical switch, a nine way. So that little red switch in the upper left goes uh, nine ways, uh, up, down, or, and then up, down, left, right, and then diagonals, and then it also presses in. Um, anyway, it's a, it's a great looking wheel. It's a very comfortable wheel. That grip in your hand on both wheels, the open wheel and on the 310 variation, both version, they are... Uh, very comfortable. Uh, they feel great in your hand. That suede feels really nice in your hand. They feel like real racing wheels. So I'm, I'm very impressed with what they did on both of those. Uh, we can go to a close-up shot on this one and see a little bit closer some of the stuff. You might have seen it, but there's that carbon fiber-esque uh, trim that goes around the aluminum tri-spoke. And again, I mentioned the buttons. They're a little more gamey. So when you look at this button here, a little hard i'm a little out of focus but that you know it's it's not a lot of travel to it and it just kind of clicky clicky um hat switch is actually kind of cool on this one um and i want to just for comparison's sake grab this guy again and show you a button up close but these jeweled buttons are really cool to look at they got like kind of a glassy thing over almost like this and you can see they actually have quite a bit of travel and uh a good amount of click good positive click as i like to say as you know anyway so um like i said it's really hard to do a review of something that i've always already reviewed and both of these were on ts bases again tsxw tspc so the the effects the force feedback the strength all that was really similar when i did the reviews the biggest difference between the two was this one came styled with a red cover and that one of course was the the pc only variation um, but 
Again, both are available for the whole ecosystem. And I, I guess if I were to give you some pros and cons, I actually went back and looked at the review for both of these. And number one on the pros, they're finally available. So I think a lot of people wanted either of these rims and kind of felt like, well, that sucks. I have a T300. I can buy the Ferrari rim. I can buy the Ferrari F1 rim. I can buy the replica GTO rim. You know, if I can buy those, then why the heck can't I buy this one or that one? Well, they're finally available. That's cool. They're totally affordable. At $149, if you are sitting on a more standard, you know, like one of the Ferrari GT wheel rims or something, at $149, that's pretty cheap to be able to have an interchangeable wheel and have it be like an open wheeled style rim. That's kind of cool. They are full size. So again, 310 millimeters for this. That's as big as you're going to want uh, in a real car or a sim. Uh, easy buttons to remember and reach. I already mentioned that on that. Very comfortable. Both of them. Man, the grips on these are nice. They're a good thickness. Um, the distance of the paddle shifters is good. This just all feels really, really nice. And again, they're both part of the ecosystem for the whole family of uh, products. Now, on the negative or the not so good, uh, getting back to this one, yeah, well, I don't know. These colors to me are kind of goofy, um, carnally ch childish almost. I mean, <laughs> they don't look very racer. When I think of, like, again, let's uh, bring up the Ferrari F1 add on and how authentic that looked in terms of realism. Sure, this one here, sure, it is a, uh, whoops, whoops, you know, sure, it, it is an authentic F1 style shape, but those, those decals don't give it that same authenticism as, say, the Ferrari F1 wheel, if that makes sense. So anyway, um, that's something that, that I, I thought could have been a little bit better or nicer, uh, but not a big deal. And you could always take those stickers off and put your own marking or stickers on them. Uh, the other one is there is this one in particular, the OW, there was a little bit of flex in the rim. So if you just look at these two ends, and when I'm really getting on it, I can feel a little bit of twist from here to here when I'm doing that. Now, I'm really wrenching on it, and that is well beyond the force feedback of any of the TS bases, but I do a lot of faux force feedback. I do a lot of wrenching on my wheel that I probably shouldn't, and I do feel that in the wheel rim, um, and I remember mentioning that when I reviewed that one as well. And then beyond that, the center hub, this plasticky back center hub that we have on the Thrustmaster wheel rims, it screws onto the wheelbase like that, so it's not a quick release, but it is fast. You know, you need a screwdriver, and you, you spin that thing on. There is just a little bit of flex in that area. And when I reviewed this rim, or wheelbase, when I reviewed this wheelbase, that was something else that I mentioned as well. So uh, just something else that I think you should keep in mind. And again, getting back to pricing on the OW, I call it the open wheel add-on. We are looking at $149.99. And I have found those available. However, on the 310, I'm wondering, did they already sell out on these things? Because I cannot find any. I went to all their vendors in the United States, that being like Fry's and Best Buy and B&H and Amazon, and nobody has them. So I think these sold out as quick as they came on, but they will get more. So they're going to be more available. So I know, I, I, I know the sound, and it kind of felt like a little bit of a promotional thing. But again, it was more like, Hey, this is big news. I want to try out the ability to kind of do something on the fly like this and just kind of give you information, have a little pre-recorded information, but not maybe do it in the same edited fashion. So this is also me getting a chance to test out just being live, giving you the, the whole scene from start to finish without any editing and see how that went. So this is a new approach, but you can find more about this at thrustmaster.com. And again, you can find them at, in America or USA. Amazon, Best Buy, Fry's, uh, B&H, Photo, and a bunch of other places. Um, so again, that's the Thrustmaster Open Wheel add-on, the Thrustmaster Competition Sparco 310 replica add-on, both now available for the entire Thrustmaster ecosystem. That's going to do it for this one. Hope I answered any questions. Told you everything you want to know about each of these wheels, and maybe that'll help you 
uh, make you have a better... I mean, for me, I'm all set. I'm going to have my TGT mounted to my VR rig, and I'll have this and this on the wall next to it to choose from. Uh, and then I even have the third rim, the one that the base came with. So that's going to be kind of cool uh, moving forward using that base. So hope you enjoyed this one. That's going to do it, though. This is The Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.